All right, KMR Rotary, welcome back to the channel that's all about the brat. So I wanted to quickly discuss uh, this block. Um, we've already featured it on the channel once. Uh, we were talking about stud fitment and uh, aftermarket studding. But I also wanted to highlight the fact that this is a 1986 um, to 88 6-port motor. So this would have been the RX-7 configuration really from 1986 to 91 with some minor casting changes. Um, a lot of people often ask, can you boost these motors? Are they good motors? How can I get more horsepower? Um, there's actually a wide variety of porting options, intake, exhaust. Um, even in the naturally aspirated configuration, these motors were pretty fun. And I often look at the porting configuration and it, and think about how this was most likely the predecessor to what is now the Renesis motor. Um, if you notice, very similar secondary port and primary port configuration. Um, they've got these interesting exhaust sleeves often. I, I recommend getting rid of those sleeves. If you have the option, you can run a turbo sleeve or an aftermarket, whether you're staying naturally aspirated or boosted. But uh, if you are trying to boost one of these what were naturally aspirated motors, um, one of the things I highly recommend is studding. And the reason is, is these motors were cast before Mazda started to increase their dowel pin land area size. So here on the front plate and on your rear housing rear plate where your oil gallery runs through the dowel pins, it's actually an exceptionally thin casting. So if you try to apply much boost pressure to these motors, they have a tendency to crack. Um, this can be caused by detonation, twisting, boost pressure. Um, there's not really any RPM problems with these motors when it come to, comes to fatigue. It's mostly on the power adder side. Um, supercharger twisting, adding nitrous, almost any significant power adder starts to put increased pressure on these dowel pins and because the castings are thin it ends up cracking the aluminum has a lot a lot more malleability or ability to stretch um, and move compared to cast iron especially thin um, cast iron that just doesn't have a high structural integrity in these areas has a tendency to split so when it really gets down to it, um, they're, they're a great block. Um, they're very fun to play with. Um, we've got great porting configurations. There's a lot of aftermarket support, racing history. But if you're gonna boost them, throw some studs in them, do something to increase block strength, highly recommended. And uh, that way you can have a, a much happier and longer lifespan um, without running into fatigue or uh, cracking or block issues. So I think that's a wrap. Cool little block here, customer sent it in. We did five studs on it. He's gonna run some boost. He's doing the porting. We lapped the sides. Happy wrapping. This one's got a whole new life ahead of it in a whole new configuration. I'm always happy to see people uh, having fun with rotaries and this is definitely somebody having fun. So thanks for watching. Let us know what you wanna see. We're always talking that rotary. I'm gonna wrap on out of here. Back to work.